Personally Identifiable Information, PII. Personally Identifiable Information is a classification placed on any type of record that could be used to identify a specific individual. This data can directly relate to the individual or services they are associated with. This data needs to be kept secure in order to protect an individual's privacy, as well as keep the data protected from cybercrime and online fraud. So what we're going to do now is look at a variety of different categories of PII that can be used to identify individuals and them in different ways, so different parts of who they are. And I guess the dangerous thing I'm trying to point out here is it's not just having one of these categories of information. It's when you start getting multiple of these categories that you can, that someone could start to pretend that they are other people and commit online fraud or cybercrime. So let's start looking at different examples of PII. And first we have just general personal information. So obtain the individual's name, date of birth, their address, contact number or email. Okay, things that are very specific to an individual that relate to them directly, their personal information. People give out this information all the time. When you sign up to a website, you give it out straight away. So it's actually very easy to obtain that information. Okay, about a person, you can send up an online phishing scam and bang, straight away, very easy to get that data about someone, give it out so easily. The second category is that of employee records. Things your workplace have stored about you now, they've already got personal information, that would be included, but then they have further information stored about you, okay, such as the address of where you work and details about where you work, okay, your payment information, the bank accounts they pay your pay into, and along with that, your tax file number for taxing purposes. So just that bit more related to your payment and place of work. Thirdly, we've got financial records, such as bank account and debit and credit card numbers. Okay, when you buy something online, you usually give this information so that the transaction amount can be deducted from the business you're buying from online from your specific bank account. Okay, and then once someone has this, they can start pretending to be you once they know your numbers and can match that to your cards and account. The next category is your username and your online identity. All right, you've got so many different logins these days and it's often common practice for people for their logins and passwords to use the same logins and passwords across multiple different sites. So this starts to become scary when hackers start to pick up on patterns being used for logins and passwords. It's easy for them to guess, okay, from one site to another. Okay, so it's very important and I know it's frustrating too that we are constantly updating and changing our passwords, um, even built into uh, programs now, it actually creates a uh, randomly generated password for you um, in a lot of operating systems these days and that's a very important feature, though it's very hard to remember what they are unless you've got your device that automatically remembers for you, but that in itself can create another issue too. But online identity and username, okay, is very important to protect. Okay. This next one is health information and a lot of records are stored about health online now. And this is data related to individuals of medical history. Okay, what diagnoses have they had? What um, medical issues have they had? What diseases may have they had? As well as prescribed medications they've been given. Okay, prescriptions are often created electronic these days and sent out as SMS for people to use when they do go to a chemist. So all that information as well is stored in online databases relevant to an individual. And then finally, we're talking about biometric data, an individual's voice, their thumbprint, their face, okay? All of that now, it can be used to recognize an individual through digital systems. Okay, a lot of um, uh, systems, even such as my iPad, has facial recognition now. So when I walk up to it, it unlocks because it sees my face. So this technology has come into effect in recent years, okay? And is used to secure data, but this data also helps um, unlock features that can be used to access systems now. Okay, so once again, data that is personal to us that we need to protect. There is one last category as well, and that's that of sensitive information. Sensitive information is a subcategory of PII and is potentially used to discriminate. Okay, so it's individuals of data, but it can also be used not just for cybercrime, but if we find out this stuff, sometimes people are targeted for this uh, these characteristics as well. So there's things such as race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, criminal record, or political opinion. Okay, it can be used to categorize people. So once again, it can be used for traditional PII. We can pretend to be someone and commit cybercrime with it, but we can also target people with this stuff and obviously, as I said, for discriminate, but these days as well, um, it can be done for, such as target advertising, um, and that's becoming a lot more through social media. 
and through websites as well where they they target their opinions at you because they know this data about you too they you know they're watching what you're looking up and all that so this sensitive information category is a whole it is an element of PII but it's also its own being as well okay this information uh, could be used to target, exploit, or exclude individual from groups through prejudices around this specific personal information. So it is things that people may want to keep private about themselves, especially in online environments as well. Okay, but yeah, people could be treated differently based on this information being found out about them. So in relation to this, and all of PI, but specifically sensitive information, it's important that we acknowledge confidentiality. Okay, so Basically, confidentiality relates to businesses being respectful of the data they have stored about individuals on their system, okay, that they keep it private. They're not going through the records they have stored about on people. Just because a business's system uh, has this data does not mean everyone that works for that business should have the right to access this data. So they've got to keep it protected even within their own company. Okay, nor does it mean this each business has the right to freely distribute this data it has stored about businesses. Okay, they've got an ethical obligation, okay, to keep that data private. And just because another company may think it's beneficial to have that data and they may be willing to pay for that data, they don't necessarily have the right to give it. Though it does get grey in areas when you sign up for something and it's in their terms and conditions that they are going to be sharing this data or tracking your usage, okay, for marketing purposes, which they might be sharing with their affiliates. Okay. Businesses have an ethical responsibility to maintain the privacy of inf of individuals of whom they've stored information about in their systems. Okay, so that's what we need to remember. They've got to keep this stuff private and attempt to at least, okay, keep it private. But obviously, in this past few years especially, cybercrime is on the rise. So although businesses may have things in place, it's an ongoing process to protect that data. Okay, hackers are finding new way in, and it's although bigger the business, it's like bigger the target as well, and they'll be going for that. Uh, business because it has more records thought about more individuals and thus they'll gain more data and it's like its own currency now the more data they're obtaining from hacking a system it's like more money itself all right so i hope this video is giving you an understanding of what personally identifiable information is pii and really it's all these different characteristics that can be linked to an individual and once found out Okay, we can use it to commit fraud or potentially cybercrime using that information. There are many different categories of it, one of those being sensitive information, which can also be used to put prejudice on individuals. And workplaces have a expectation to confidentiality and protect the data they have stored about individuals, not just from external viewers, but also within its own organization that they're, they're keeping that data secure, safe, and private.